Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Rainer, this is Rainier Books. Today I have another top 10 list. I have 10 books for you that deal with abortion. Two topics are being heavily discussed this week in the world. One is of course the ongoing war in Ukraine, the Russian aggression against Ukraine. The other topic, mostly discussed in the United States but also in Europe, is the probable withdrawal of Roe v. Wade in the United States. That means that after 50 years is almost 50 years of a free right to abortion for every girl and every woman in the United States, this right will very likely be withdrawn by the Supreme Court in the summer of 2022. 2022. I repeat that. If the Supreme Court in Washington rules to abolish Roe v. Wade and give the right to decide back to the individual states, we have Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Kentucky, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, among these 13 states where abortion will immediately be abolished. In total, it looks like 25, up to 25 mostly red states might disallow girls and women to end an unwanted pregnancy. Pregnant women then will have in these 25 or in these 13 or maybe 25 states will have to travel a long, long way to states where abortion is still allowed. This will primarily punish poor people, poor families, poor women who cannot afford to travel to the West or the East Coast. The far right in the United States, the far right's attack on human rights might not stop there. Already experts have stated that Donald Trump's Supreme Court might even attack the right to gay marriage, might even attack the right to interracial marriage in some American states. The Civil War gets closer. The enormous gap between the states who are red and blue gets wider and the common sense that once united the United States of America is long, long gone. The control of the body of the woman is one battlefield for right-wing conservatives to regain control, to get back to the good old times, to shout stop to an ever-changing world. I'm not against life, but I'm for the rights of women, for the rights of women, and I am also for the right of women to decide about their own body, to decide about their own life. So let's get to the books that I want to talk about because I curated a list of 10 books that deal with the topic of abortion. Most of them are literary fiction and two of them are non-fiction books. Let's start with number one, one of the most famous books probably about, also about this topic, which is the Handmaid's Tale by Canadian author Margaret Atwood. The Handmaid's Tale is a novel about of such power that the reader will be unable to forget its images and its forecast. Set in the near future, it describes life in what once was the United States and is now called the Republic of Gillet, a monotheocracy that has reacted to social unrest and a sharply declining birth rate by reverting to and going beyond the repressive intolerance of the original Puritans. The regime takes the book of Genesis absolutely at its word with bizarre consequences for the men and women in its population. Doesn't that sound so strange? The story is told through the eyes of Offred, one of the unfortunate handmaids under the new social order. In condensed but eloquent prose, by turns cool-eyed, tender, despairing, passionate and wry, she reveals us certain tendencies now in existence are carried to the logical conclusions. The Handmaid's Tale is funny, unexpected, horrifying and altogether convincing. It is at once scathing satire and a dire warning and a tour de force. It is Margaret Atwood at her best. Number two is A Spark of Light by Jodie Picoult. The warm fall day starts like any other at the center. A women's reproductive health services clinic, its staff offering care to anyone who passes through its doors. Then, in late morning, a desperate and distraught gunman bursts in and opens fire, taking all inside hostage. After rushing to the scene, Hugh McElroy, a police hostage negotiator, sets up parameter and begins making a plan to communicate with the gunman. As his phone vibrates with incoming text messages, he glances at it and to his horror finds out that his 15-year-old daughter Wren is inside the clinic. But Wren is not alone. She will share the next and tensest few hours of her young life with a cast of unforgettable characters. 
a nurse who calms her own panic in order to save the life of a wounded woman. A doctor who does his work not in spite of his faith, but because of it, and who will find that faith tested as never before. A pro-life protester disguised as a patient who now stands in the crosshairs of the same rage she herself has felt. A young woman who has come to terminate her pregnancy, and the disturbed individual himself vowing to be heard. Told in a daring and enthralling narrative structure that counts backward through the hours of the standoff is way back. This is a story that traces its way back to that brought each of these very different individuals to the same place on this fateful day. Jody Picoult, one of the most fearless writers of our time, tackles a complicated issue in this gripping and nuanced novel. How do we balance the rights of pregnant women with the rights of the unborn they carry? What does it mean to be a good parent? A spark of light will inspire debate, conversation, and hopefully understanding. Three, a book of American martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates. In this striking, enormously affecting novel, Joyce Carol Oates tells the story of two very different and yet intimately linked American families. Luther Dunphy is an ardent evangelical who envisions himself as acting out God's will when he assassinates an abortion provider in a small Ohio town, while Augustus Voorhees, the idealistic but self-regarding doctor who is killed, leaves behind a wife and children scarred and embittered by grief. In her moving, insightful portrait, Joyce Carol Oates fully inhabits the perspectives of those two interwoven families whose destinies are defined by their warring convictions and squarely but with great empathy confronts an intractable, abiding rift in American society. A Book of American Martyrs is a stunning, timely depiction of an issue hotly debated on a national stage, but which makes itself felt most lastingly in communities torn apart by violence and hatred. Number four, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Set within a contemporary black community in Southern California, Britt Bennett's mesmerizing first novel is an emotionally perceptive story about community, love, and ambition. It begins with a secret. All good secrets have a taste before you tell them, and if we'd taken a moment to swish this one around our mouths, we might have noticed the sourness of an unripe secret, plucked too soon, stolen, and passed around before its season. It is the last season of high school life for Nadia Turner, a rebellious, grief-stricken 17-year-old beauty. Mourning her own mother's recent suicide, she takes up with a local pastor's son. Luke Shepard is 21, a former football star whose injury has reduced him to waiting tables at a diner. They are young, it's not serious. But the pregnancy that results from this teen romance and the subsequent cover-up will have an impact that goes far beyond their youth. As Nadia hides her secret from everyone, including Aubrey, her God-fearing best friend, the years move quickly. Soon, Nadia, Luke, and Aubrey are full-fledged adults and still living in debt to the choices they made that one seaside summer. Caught in a love triangle, they must carefully maneuver and dogged by the constant nagging question, what if they had chosen differently? The possibilities of the road not taken are a relentless haunt in entrancing lyrical prose. The Mothers asks whether a what-if can be more powerful than an experience itself. If as time passes, we must always live in servitude to the decisions of our younger selves, to the communities that have parented us, and to the decisions we make that shape our lives forever. Number 5. Red Clocks by Lainey Zumas In a small Oregon fishing town, five very different women navigate these new barriers alongside age-old questions surrounding motherhood identity, and freedom. Ro, a single high school teacher, is trying to have a baby on her own while also writing a biography of Avier, a little-known 19th century female polar explorer. Susan is a frustrated mother of two trapped in a crumbling marriage. Maddie is the adopted daughter of doting parents and one of Ro's best students who finds herself pregnant with nowhere to turn. And Jin is the gifted forest-dwelling herbalist or mender who brings all their fates together when she's arrested and put on trial in a frenzied modern-day witch hunt. Red Clocks is at once a riveting drama whose mysteries unfold with magnetic energy and a shattering novel of ideas. In the wane of Margaret Atwood, Eileen Miles, 
Lainey Zomas fearlessly explores the contours of female experience, evoking the handmaid's tale for a new millennium. This is a story of resilience, transformation and hope in tumultuous, even frightening times. Number six, When She Woke by Hilary Jordan. Bellwether Prize winner Hilary Jordan's provocative novel, When She Woke, tells the story of a stigmatized woman struggling to navigate an America of a not too distant future where the line between church and state has been eradicated and convicted fel felons are no longer imprisoned and rehabilitated but chromed, their skin color is genetically altered to match the class of their crimes and then released back into the population to survive as best as they can. Hannah is a red, her crime is murder. In seeking a path to safety in an alien and hostile world, Hannah unknowingly embarks on a path of self-discovery that forces her to question the values she once held true and the righteousness of a country that politicizes faith. Number seven, The Cider House Rules by John Irving. Raised from birth in the orphanage at St. Cloud's, Maine, Homer Wells has become the protégé of Dr. Wilbur Larch, its physician and director. There, Dr. Larch cares for the troubled mothers who seek his help, either by delivering and taking in their unwanted babies or by performing illegal abortions. Meticulously trained by Dr. Larch, Homer assists in the former but draws the line at the latter. Then a young man brings his beautiful fiancée to Dr. Large for an abortion, and everything about the couple beckons Homer to the wide world outside the orphanage. Number eight, and we turn outside the United States now. This is Happening by Annie Ernaud, original title L'Evenement, written in 2000, and this is autobiographical. In 1963, French writer Annie Ernaud, 23 and unattached, realizes she's pregnant. Understanding that her pregnancy will mark her and her family as social failures, she knows she cannot keep the child. This is a story written 40 years later of a trauma Arnaud never overcame. In a France where abortion was illegal, she attempted in vain to self-administer the abortion with a knitting needle. Fearful and desperate, she finally located an abortionist and ends up in a hospital emergency ward where she nearly dies. In Happening, Ernaud sifts through her memories and her journal entries dating from those days. Clearly, cleanly, she gleans the meanings of her experience. Number nine, and it's another novel, it's from China, and it's called Frog by Mao Yan, the Nobel Prize winner in literature. In 2012, the Nobel Prize comedy in Stockholm, Sweden, confirmed Mao Yan's position as one of the greatest and most important writers of our time. In his much-anticipated novel, Mao Yan chronicles the sweeping history of modern China through the lens of the nation's controversial one-child policy. Frog opens with a playwright nicknamed Tadpole who plans to write about his aunt. In her youth, Gugu, the beautiful daughter of a famous doctor and staunch communist, is revered for her skill as a midwife. But when her lover defects, Gugu's own loyalty to the party is questioned. She decides to prove her allegiance by strictly enforcing the one-child policy, keeping taps on the number of children in the village, and performing abortions on women as many as eight months pregnant. In sharply personal prose, Mo Yan depicts a world of desperate families, illegal surrogates, forced abortions, and the guilt of those who must enforce the policy. At once illuminating and devastating, it shines a light into the heart of communist China. Frog by Mo Yang, the last literary fiction title on my top 10 list of books you should read about abortion. The last one is nonfiction, and the last one is The Lie That Binds by Elise Hoke. The Lie That Binds is the indispensable account of how the formerly nonpartisan backburner issue of abortion rights was reinvented as the sharp point of the spare for a much larger movement bent on maintaining control in a changing world. Written by narrow pro-choice America president Elise Hoke and research director Ellie Langford, the lie that binds traces the evolution of some of the most dangerous and least understood forces in US politics. Offering an unflinchingly incisive analysis of the conservative political machinery designed to thwart social progress, 
all built around the foundational lie that their motivations are based on moral convictions about individual pregnancies. This book introduces the colorful cast of characters behind the radical right from anti-ERA protesters to men's rights activists and explains how conservative political operatives intentionally targeted abortion as a rallying cry for their followers as their other prejudices fell from favor. Ultimately, opposing abortion rights was a Trojan horse to move a deeply unpopular regressive policy agenda under the guise of morality. Yo Hogan Langford's deeply researched investigation is an essential primer for political observers, journalists and engaged citizens, pulling back the curtain on how this radical operation drives our politics and threatens our democracy. Read it and learn the truth behind the lie. So these are my top 10 books about abortion that I curated for you, that I curated for this channel. Let me know what you think and let me know what you have read of these books or if you have read other books brought you to tears that have brought you to think about this issue. Thanks very much for watching this video. I see you very soon with a new video with the Sunday sum up on Sunday. Bye bye.